I'd love to hear some of the stories you have of like, hey, this is what it looked like and this is what it looks like today. It's difficult to understand like why it's hard to do something. But then when you hear the technical debt behind it, like, wow, that's no wonder it was so hard to get something yeah, done. Yeah. Matt, sounds like you got a story. Hit it. There's just a long tail of, of uh, IT deprecation. I was asked, I'm on this Forbes Technology Council, and then one of the questions recently were asked was around, you know, what are some good things to measure? Well, measuring what you actually retire is a pretty important metric for a lot of these enterprises because what happens is you'll get some big migration initiative. I worked for a big bank, and they took on this ambitious project years ago to retire their green screens. What are green screens? Those are the terminals that connect into mainframe applications and and this you know in banking we're we're literally talking about applications that were written in the 1960s right and 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 they have they have taken on a life of their own and interestingly enough the actual software that does the terminal emulation has changed over time but it's still that same sort of blocky green screen but this is a reality for big banks insurance companies government where it just costs a lot of money to retire stuff. If you don't have a compelling business need to do it, then it's a problem. But even besides that, sometimes they take on that migration initiative and they still can't get rid of the stuff. You know, and, and usually they don't fully get rid of it. And one of the things I've experienced is if you're trying to get rid of something, you can't really get rid of it until you sort of cut it off from the rest of the of the organization. You know, I went through this experience in migrating a large customer information system, which was based in a big mainframe and it had so many integration points. The actual only way we could finally get rid of it was to hide it from the customer and then behind the scenes, get rid of it. And so that's when, when we talk about green screens, these are still in, in operations. You might not see them as the customer on the website, but when you call up that customer service representative, they literally might be looking at a green screen. And until you can plug into those old systems and get them into the flows, you're never going to really get rid of them. And so that's why it sounds like, okay, well, why are you investing in that type of connectivity? Well, we want to move customers forward to help them finally put a nail, the final nail in the coffin of some of these old systems. Yeah. And I, I hear that all the time too. Like one of the insurance customers that we talked with, they're like, all right, we want to replace 5,600 different processes on this one system with Salesforce. How do we do it? Well, so 5,600, 5,600 <laughs> processes on one legacy system. It's, it's an insurance customer. And like basically the old system was moving digital pieces of paper around. And so we're like, all right, let's just start with change address, right? It's a pretty good one, high volume. So I want to change my address. Well, first, they have 10 different ways to let you request to do it. You can call up. You can literally scribble a piece of paper saying, <laughs> I want to change my address. They support fax. So there's all these inbound channels just to take the request. And to do like digital self-service, they can use Salesforce for the digital form. So they need one tool for one set of personas for that. That's consumer grade. Then you need to be able to do a bunch of the routing work. How do you route the work to the right people at the right time and handle exceptions? There's another BPM tool, orchestration, that we do for that. Then they have 12 different lines of business for change address, which use a MuleSoft API that's connected. So for those 12, you're then making an API call to go and actually do that API request. Four other ones aren't. They're not connected. They're too expensive to connect. And so they're using RPA for that. And so just with this humble change address, you need to have low code forms that are consumer grade. You need multi-person processes. You need API integration. You need to have RPA for that last mile so you don't need a person literally copy and pasting between systems and then have this all in a reportable, consumable way that can be governed. And so this is what I feel so excited about with the suite that we offer. We have the right tool for the right use case, for the right persona to help solve for whether it's simple or complex, things like change address. That's what I'm getting at. Like, I think that was a great example is when we think of changing an address, we assume it's a simple thing. Log on, form fill, boom, we're done like that. But like when you have, as you just described, this many systems in between that process, that's where things get extremely complicated. And if you're saying, hey, this giant financial legacy company, they're probably, I don't know how many customers, what their value they're dealing with every single day. They just can't afford for it to not work. So that makes the transformation even that much more critical <laughs> because it's really hard to train customers to do the new thing. What are some of the CIOs, CTOs, CEOs, what are they afraid of? Why not embrace these transformations faster? Now that there's more automation, I think it's one of those things where if I hear it, I think that's a good idea. I would assume most people think that's a good idea, but there's obviously costs and time and labor, whatever the case may be in front of that. What do you think is stopping 
slowing, preventing, whatever you want to describe it, just barriers to just widely just like, let's automate as much as we can. Is it mostly budgets? Is it not understanding the process? Is it possibly overthinking how big the project could be? John, I didn't know if you had any ideas about like what what those barriers are and if they're still there or they started, it sounds like they might start being um, chipped away nowadays. Like people are like, okay, we got to change. Yeah, I think there's a big evolution. I think about it this in terms of like the categories of personas. And so traditionally you'd have a lot of developers or people in IT that they would be the bottleneck. You'd say, hey, uh, Miss IT leader, we need to have this process automated, pretty please. And you get on the backlog. And IT gets frustrated because the backlog goes like this, the business people get frustrated because it goes like this. So there's always been this demand of having people in the business, like the business analysts, the Excel ninjas, to be able to do some amount of either creating or editing of automation and workflows. But the IT folks, rightly so, are saying, hey, what's going to happen when this breaks? Hey, what if you're duplicating work? What mm -hmm. if you break the law inadvertently? How can I make sure that giving you this power is okay? And so what I've been so excited about that's been changing and evolving is due to these partnerships with these suites like Salesforce, you can have these pro code and specialist tools that then can be given to business analysts with visibility, with governance, with monitoring, with clarity of who handles that call if something goes down and how can you make sure that there's minimal time so that you've got these fusion teams rising to basically tackle the teams together and have the people with the best business expertise of what do you need to do, the business analysts, participate in that process with the people that are very good understanding the technology and tools and compliance needs. Yeah, and I, I totally agree on the evolution side of this, right? Like, and companies are at different stages. So to John's point, it really is about IT and business people coming together. Because I think historically the obstacles have been that the, the budgets are dictated by the business. And so when IT wants to do something transformational, they have to try and wedge it into whatever business initiatives are there or come up with a big you know, swing for the fences uh, transformation initiative, which can end up in the situation I mentioned before where you only end up doing 10% of the migration and you're left with 90% of the problem, right? I think recognizing that we're all in this business of IT and have different roles, you know, I think that in, in organizations I see doing this really well, they do have fusion teams like John mentioned, they've got a recognition that, you know, there's people, everybody's in this business of IT. Some are more focused on the overall system, kind of macro level, which are more aligned with historical IT. And, and some are more focused on building new products and experiences, which may be more correlated with these product groups and, and, and business teams. So it's really about evolving. I, I think it does go back as well to that idea I said before, that when we deliver, we always need to think about what are we solving right now and what are we unlocking for the future? You know, I've spent some good time with Asat Cesaro, who used to be CIO of Coca-Cola, and he was describing some of the best practices he's used uh, to bring in automation and as, a, as an enabler for the business. And he talked about how, you know, some of the things they did, they would build, bring in stuff like image recognition as new capabilities within IT, within their budget, and then focus on enabling the business to use that new capability so that they could then innovate with it. And I think there's some really good lessons coming out of that as well. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment is brought to us by Salesforce platform. Visit salesforce.com slash newsletter to discover timely insights and useful tips tailored to your role. Subscribe to this channel and get more great IT and tech interviews with top industry leaders.